How's guys? What's going on? My name is Prashant. Welcome back to Tech Scene Daily. Today, we're discussing ways to boost your Wi-Fi signal without spending a penny. So if this is your first time here, you better make sure you're subscribed because you're missing out on all the awesome content that we put out. Welcome back to the second episode of Better Wi-Fi. And as I mentioned, today we're discussing ways of improving our signal. So a lot of the time, this is the second thing that causes a lot of problems for people with their Wi-Fi. And let's dive straight into it. The first thing we need to do is run a speed test. So there are a lot of reasons why you might have slow Wi-Fi. So it's good to actually start with the basics and run an internet speed test to see what kind of internet speeds the router is getting before it gets converted to a wireless signal. So you can try speedtest.net or fast.com and if you're not getting between 5 megabits per second of your suggested speed then maybe it might be a problem with your ISP. So generally you have like a 5 to 10 uh, megabit per second difference but it varies a lot of the time depending on how many users are on the network so I'd suggest doing the speed test at a quiet period not when like everyone's home is streaming Netflix then it just throws the measurement off because you can run a speed test on your 50 meg line and it might only be showing you 20 megs because someone came home and they're streaming 4k Netflix all of this will actually depend on your ISP and what sort of speed plan you are on. The second thing is you need to make sure that there are no Wi-Fi freeloaders on your network. So I actually had this issue recently but that's a story for another day. So your Wi-Fi might buckle under the load of a lot of users or a lot of devices using your internet connection at the same time. And if you aren't securing your Wi-Fi network with a strong password, it's entirely possible that neighbors and people just uh, generally around you might be siphoning off your bandwidth and that's why I would also suggest that you actually have a somewhat table or spreadsheet of the devices in your home and their MAC addresses so that if you look at your DHCP table you won't only just see a name you would see a MAC address and you can sometimes cross-reference it and say, hey, I don't know what device name this is, but I can see from that MAC address that this is my, my phone or someone else's phone that you know. And you don't think, you know what, it's just some random person. This too is coming from experience because there were times where I would regularly check up on the network and I'd see device and I'd block it. And then like half an hour later, someone will say, hey, YouTube's not working on the TV, I don't know why. Then it'd be like, oh, okay, I know which device this is now. <laughs> and if it is the case that you are seeing devices that are not yours or people that are siphoning out for your network, you need to go into the admin control panel of your router and change the password right away and increase your security settings. The third suggestion is to upgrade your router and possibly add range extenders or maybe convert your network to a mesh network. So replacing your router is always something of a last resort. Not only can a new router be expensive, but there's a lot of work to set up a new router compared to, you know, just using what we have and having various new devices join your network. But if your router is limited to obsolete 802.11n or 802.11g standards for example you might want to look into upgrading to 802.11ac or in simpler terms a Wi-Fi 6 router and especially if you have a large home and your router isn't yet obsolete you might want to add uh, more Wi-Fi range extenders and you can actually reuse your router as a as a range extender and if you'd like to know more about that we did a video a long time back that video is linked up there in the YouTube cards 
and you can check that out. So the range extenders are small affordable devices that basically amplify signal uh, where there are somewhat dead spots therefore extending the coverage of your home and generally all you need to do is plug them in and connect them to your network wirelessly and it just repeats and extends range. The major disadvantages of range extenders is usually they have their own SSID so you'll have to change networks when you're going from one end of the house to the other which is a bit of a schlep and even if you try to have the same uh, name it doesn't generally change over and then it causes speed problems and you wonder why your internet is slow so that's just another headache to worry about. So another alternative as I mentioned is upgrading to a mesh network. So what's a mesh network? Mesh networks or mesh routers usually come with two or three component devices rather than a single router and you can connect them at different locations throughout your home and together they deliver a strong fast Wi-Fi signal over a large coverage area and it's better than your typical router. An example of a mesh kit would be something similar to the D-Link COVR AX1800 which we recently reviewed and if you'd like to learn more about mesh kits you can check out that video. The fourth thing would be uh, to upgrade your router firmware but before you start tweaking things it's a good idea to upgrade your router firmware. Router manufacturers are always improving software to get out a bit more speed. How easy or how hard it is to upgrade your firmware depends entirely on your device manufacturer and what sort of model you have of the device. But most of the current routers have the upgrading process built right into the administration interface. So all you have to do is just hit a button that says upgrade firmware and most of the other models if they are particularly older require you to visit your manufacturer's website and download the firmware file from the router's support page and then upload it into the administration interface. It's a bit tedious but still a good thing to do since it would be such a simple fix. In fact, even if your wireless network isn't ailing, you should make it a point to upgrade your firmware on a regular basis for performance improvements, better features, security updates. So if you really want to get the most out of your current device or even have a little older devices that you want to play around with and want to be a bit adventurous, you can look at third-party softwares like the open source DDWRT. This can ramp up performance and give you access to more advanced networking features like including the ability of installing a VPN right into your router. It's a bit more complex to set up but it's more for the tech savvy router but it may be worth it. So the final thing is control quality. Most routers come with a quality of service or QoS tool to limit the amount of bandwidth that apps can use like we would have seen in some of our dealing routers. QoS settings can typically be uh, found under advanced settings in the network administration interface. For example, you can go into QoS to prioritize video calls over file downloads. That way if like you have your grandma who's on a call and it won't be dropping just because someone else is downloading a 10 gig movie from somewhere. Where are they downloading that movie from? I don't know. So the file might take longer to download but it should keep your video call looking crisp. Some other QoS settings even allow you to, to prioritize different apps at specific times of the day. Some routers even make it easier by offering one-click multimedia or gaming settings. So you know that applications will be prioritized if you're trying to stream or game while sharing a network. So yeah, that brings us to the end. I hope you enjoyed our second video of better Wi-Fi and you can let us know what you think about my suggestions in the comments below and if you have other suggestions 
on how we can improve our signal. But yeah guys, thank you very much for watching. My name is Sean and I'll see you in the next video.